So it's that, it's the deep down stuff that's uh, in our genetics, but also is it just, are people freaked out by the fact that there's a robot? So it's not just the appearance, but there, there's an artificial human. Anything people I think, and, and I'm just always also fascinated by the blind spots humans have. So the idea that you're afraid of that, I mean, how many robots have killed people? How many humans have died at the hands of other humans? Yeah. A, millions? A few more. Yeah. Hundreds of millions? <laughs> yeah. Yet we're scared of that? Yeah. And we'll go to the grocery store and be around a bunch of humans who statistically, the chances are much higher that you're going to get killed by a human. So I'm just fascinated by, without judgment, how irrational we are as, as a the, species. The worry is the exponential. So it's, you know, you can say the same thing about nuclear weapons before we dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So the worry that people have is the exponential growth. So, mm -hmm. so it's like, oh, it's fun and games right now, but uh, you know, overnight, especially if a, if a robot provides value to society, we'll put one in every home, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden lose track of the actual large scale impact it has on society, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden we'll gain greater and greater control to where we'll all be you know, affect our political system and then affect our decision. Didn't robots about. already ruin our political system? Didn't that just already happen? Which ones? Oh, Russia hacking. No uh, offense. <laughs> but hasn't that already taken. happened? <laughs> I mean, that was like an algorithm of negative yeah. things being clicked on more. We'd like to tell stories and like to demonize certain people. I think nobody understands our current political system or discourse on Twitter, mm -hmm. the Twitter mobs. Nobody has a sense, not Twitter, not Facebook, the people running it. Nobody understands the impact of these algorithms. They're trying their best. Yeah. Despite what people think, they're not like a bunch of lefties trying to uh, make sure that Hillary Clinton gets elected. It's more that uh, it's an incredibly complex system that we yeah. don't, and that's the worry. It's so complex and moves so fast that, uh, nobody will be able to stop it once it happens. And let me ask a question. This is a very savage question. Yeah. Which is, is this just the next stage of evolution as humans? Some people will die. Yes, yeah, I mean, that's always happened, you know? Is this is just taking emotion out of it? Is this basically the next stage of survival of the fittest? Yeah, you have to think of organisms you know, what is it mean to be a living organism? Like is a smartphone part of your living organism or? We're, uh, we're in relationships with our phones. Yeah. But we have sex through them, with them. What's the difference between with them and through them? But it also expands your cognitive abilities, expands your memory, knowledge, and so on. So you're a much smarter person because you have a smartphone in your hand. But if, when, as soon as it's out of my hand, yeah. <laughs> we've got big problems because we've become sort of so morphed with them. Well, there's a symbiotic relationship. And that's what uh, so Elon Musk and Neuralink is working on trying to increase the bandwidth of communication between computers and your brain. Mm -hmm. And so further and further expand our ability as human beings to sort of leverage machines. And mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's the future, the evolution, next evolutionary step. It could be also that, uh, yes, we'll give birth, just like we give birth to human children right now, to, we'll give birth to AI and they'll replace us. I think it's a really interesting possibility. I'm gonna play devil's advocate. I just think that the fear of robots is wildly classist because, I mean, Facebook, like it's easy for us to say they're taking their data. Okay, well, a lot of people that get employment off of Facebook, they are able to get income off of Facebook. They don't care if you take their phone numbers and their emails and their data, as long as it's free. They don't wanna have to pay $5 a month for Facebook. Facebook is a wildly democratic thing. Forget about the election and all that kind of stuff. You know, a lot of, you know, technology making people's lives easier, It, I find that, most elite people are more scared than lower income people. Yes. So, and women for the most part. So the idea of something that's stronger than us and that might eventually kill us, like women are used to that. <laughs> like that's not, I see a lot of like really wit rich men being like, the robots are gonna kill us. We're like, what's another thing that's gonna kill us? You know, I tend to see like, oh, something can walk me to my car at night. Like something can help me cook dinner or something, you know, um, for, you know, people in underprivileged countries who can't afford eye surgery, like in a robot, can we send a robot to underprivileged, you know, places to do surgery where they can't? I work with this um, uh, organization called Operation Smile where they do cleft palate surgeries. And there's a lot of places that can't do a very simple surgery um, because they can't afford doctors and medical care and such. So 
I just see, and this can be completely naive and should be completely wrong, but I feel like we're a lot of people are going like the robots are going to destroy us. Humans, we're destroying ourselves. We're self-destructing. Robots, to me, are the only hope to clean up all the messes that we've created. Even when we go try to clean up pollution in the ocean, we make it worse because of the oil that the tankers use. <laughs> like, it's like, to me, robots are the only solution. You know, firefighters are heroes, but they're limited in how many times they can run into a fire, you know? So there's just something interesting to me. I'm not hearing a lot of like lower income, more vulnerable populations talking about robots. Maybe you can speak to it a little bit more. There's an idea, I think you've expressed it. I've uh, heard actually a few female writers and roboticists and stuff talk to express this idea that uh, exactly what you, you just said, which is, it just seems that uh, being being afraid of existential threats of artificial intelligence is is a male issue. Yeah. It And I wonder what that is, if it, uh, because, because men have been in certain positions, like you said, it's also a classist issue. They haven't been humbled by life. And so you always look for the biggest problems to take on around you. It's a champagne problem to be afraid of robots. Most people like don't have health insurance. They're afraid they're not gonna be able to feed their kids. They can't afford a tutor for their kids. Like, I mean, I just think of, you know, the way I grew up and I had a mother who, you know, worked two jobs, had kids. We couldn't afford an SAT tutor. You know, like we the idea of a robot coming in, being able to tutor your kids, being able to provide childcare for your kids, you know, being able to come in with cameras for eyes and make sure, you know, surveillance. You know, I'm very pro surveillance because, you know, I've had security problems and I've been, you know, we're generally in a little more danger than you guys are. So I think that robots are a little less scary to us because we can see them maybe as like free assistance, help and protection. And then there's sort of another element for me personally, which is maybe more of a female problem. I don't know, I'm just gonna make a generalization. <laughs> Happy to be wrong. But, you know, the emotional sort of component of robots and what they can provide in terms of, you know, there. I think there's a lot of people that aren't don't have microphones that I just recently kind of stumbled upon in doing all my research on the sex robots for my stand-up special, which is there's a lot of very shy people that aren't good at dating. There's a lot of people who are scared of human beings who, you know, have personality disorders or grew up in alcoholic homes or struggle with addiction or whatever it is where a robot can solve an emotional problem. And so we're largely having this conversation about like, rich guys that are emotionally healthy and how scared of robots they are. <laughs> We're forgetting yeah. about like a huge part of the population who maybe isn't as charming and effervescent yeah. and solvent as, you know, people like you and Elon Musk, who these robots could solve very real problems in, in their life, emotional or financial. Well, that's a, in general, a really interesting idea that most people in the world don't have a voice. It's, uh, you've talked about it, sort of even the people on Twitter who are, driving the conversation. You said comments. People who leave comments represent a very tiny percent of the population. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones they, you know, we tend to think they speak for the population, but it's very possible on many topics they don't at all. And look, I, I and I'm sure there's got to be some kind of legal, you know, sort of structure in place for when the robots happen. You know way more about this than I do, but you know, for me to just go, the robots are bad. That's a wild generalization that I feel like is really inhumane in some way. You know, just after the research I've done, like you're gonna tell me that a man whose wife died suddenly and he feels guilty moving on with a human woman or can't get over the grief, he can't have a sex robot in his own house? Why, why not? Who cares? Why do you care? Well, there's a interesting aspect of human nature. So, you know, we uh, tend to as a, as a civilization to create a group that's the other in all kinds of ways. Right. And so you work with animals too. You've, you're especially sensitive to the suffering of animals. So let me kind of ask, what's your, do you think we'll abuse robots in the future? Do, do, you, do you think some of the darker aspects of human nature will come out? I think some people robots? will, but if we design them properly, the people that do it, we can put it on a record and they can, we, but we can put them in jail. We can find sociopaths more easily, you know, like. But why is that Why is that a sociopathic thing to harm a robot? I think, look, I don't know as enough, enough about the consciousness and stuff as you do. It, I guess it would have to be when they're conscious, but it is, you know, the 
part of the brain that is you know responsible for compassion the frontal lobe or whatever like people that abuse animals also abuse humans and commit other kinds of crimes like that's it's all the same part of the brain no one abuses animals and then is like awesome to women and children and awesome to underprivileged you know minorities like it's all so you know we've been working really hard to um, put a database together of all the people that have abused animals so when they commit another crime you go okay this is you know it's all the same stuff and i think people probably think i'm nuts for the a lot of the animal work i do but because when animal abuse is present another crime is always present but the animal abuse is the most socially acceptable you can kick a dog and there's nothing people can do but then what they're doing behind closed doors you can't see so there's always something else going on which is why i never feel compunction about it but i do think we'll start seeing the same thing with robots yes. um the person that kicks the i, I felt compassion when the, the kicking the dog robot really pissed me off <laughs> i know that they're just trying to get the stability right and all that but i do think there will come a time where that will be a great way to be able to figure out if somebody is has like you know antisocial behaviors